行くぞこの理由は私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しては、私の思いに関しI'm that YouTuber. Now let's talk about Vegapunk, the leading scientist in the employment of the Marines. His works include discovering the secrets and use of sea stones, the secrets of how their f r u i t s powers work, and various other scientific achievements that are said to be at least 500 years ahead of current technology. And we also know that he was a former member of MADS, MADS which was an illegal scientific research team that was active over 24 years ago. The known members were Dr. Vegapunk. Currently considered the world's great scientist and head of the Marines SSG. Caesar Clown, the man behind the creation of smiles. Vince Mook Judge, the supreme commander of Germa 66 and king of Germa Kingdom. And Queen, a cyborg and one of the Beast Pirates all star top executives, hand picked by Kaido of the Four Emperors to lead his forces. All of the known members have been proven to be brilliant researchers in their own right. Holding high status in the organizations they currently belong to, and being res responsible for various scientific breakthroughs, including cybernetics, artificial devil fruits, identification, cloning, and artificial diseases. I also believe there to be another two members to MADS, and that being Lindbergh, or Lind for short, is a cat mink and the commander of the South Armies in the Revolutionary Army. And also, Dr. Indigo, the scientist of the Golden Lion Pirates. Due to the movie Strong Will Being Canon and the reveal that Shiki was indeed part of the Rock's pirate crew, then Dr. Indigo should not be ignored. In this mad group of scientists, I believe that Vegapunk, Judge, Dr. Indigo, and Queen were the lead scientists of the group, and Caesar Clown and Linkberg were the cabin boys of the group. Besides Vegapunk and Dr. Indigo, Rest in peace, all the ages of the other scientists have been revealed. Queen of the Beast Pirates is 56 years old, and so is Vince Mook Judge, so both would have been 22 years old when they left Mads, maybe in rivals with one another. Caesar Clown is now 40 years old and would have been 16 years old, and Lindbergh is now 37 years old, so he would have been 13 years old. So, with the two being the youngest, Makes sense that they would be learning from the leading scientists. Now, if you're talking about ages, then Sentomaru, who is Vegapunk's bodyguard, is 34 years old, but I do not think he was a member of MADS due to his fighting abilities, and do not start looking at ages, or next you'll be saying Frankie was a member as well. I did the research, so you don't need to. Now, that's MADS history out of the way. Let's talk about the real reason why Vegapunk hasn't been revealed. Everyone, Flying Panda, the One Piece Fears. The real reason why Vega Punk hasn't been revealed. Hi, everyone, it's Flying Panda. Dr. Vega Punk is still very much a mystery. But we need to dig deeper on what could be his intentions and also how much of an impact h a s he had on his previous MADS members. The first time we heard about Vegapunk is just after in his lobby. Kobe speaks with Luffy about the amazing things he learned since joining the Marines. In particular, that Marine ships are able to cross the calm belt because the genius Dr. Vegapunk made ships lined with sea stones. Vegapunk having a big impact within the Marines already by ensuring they could travel along the seas without getting attacked by the humongous Sea Kings. We then don't hear about Vegapunk again until Thriller Bark when Kuma appears. When Zoro cuts Kuma in an attempt to save Luffy, it was revealed that Kuma was a cyborg, developed by the genius scholar Dr. Vegapunk, 
a man with abilities 500 years ahead of the times. This is the first connection we have with Queen from the Beast Powers who also specialises in cybernetics. We have seen this from his attacks from his body. We later learn at Shaobundi that there are multiple clones of Kumut called the Pastafistas. X Drake noticed that these Pastafistas are using Kizuru's laser beams. They've been developed this far, reproduce Kizuru's ability. This is the first connections here with both Finsmoke Judge and Lindbergh. Judge has perfected the lineage factor by creating multiple clones and with Lindbergh so it seems he can also put Delphi powers into his weapons. Lindbergh debuted a weapon called Cool Shooter which fighting the Peachbeard Pirates in the Lulusia Kingdom. The Cool Shooter can fire rapid bullets that freeze small sections of his targeted bodies. Now why mention Delphi powers? I believe Alkoji visited the Revolutionary Army and on his visits Lindbergh got to use his power on his weapons. Hope you're enjoying these connections and if you do, leave a like. We don't hear about Vegapunk again until Pank Hazard and it's here that perhaps we learn the most. To start with, we learned that Pank Hazard was the location of the old research facility where Vegapunk worked with Caesar Clown. Four years ago on Pank Hazard there was a disastrous accident that left the island seemingly uninhabitable. Caesar claims that Vegapunk was responsible for this accident. Soon after this, we learn from CP0 at the banquet that Vegapunk used his lineage factor in the attempt to synthesis an artificial copy of Kylo's fruit. One of the other members comments that they thought it was destroyed in Pank Hazard explosion. This is the fruit Momonosuke ate. With the failed devil fruit, it led on to Caesar Clown creating his own small devil fruits which gave Kaido his beast pirate army. Now the final connection with Vegapunk is with Dr. Indigo who was a chemist. He was the one in charge in the development of Shiki's scheme involving all the monstrous animals and was the one who developed the SIQ serum. SIQ is a drug developed by Indigo the doctor of the Golden Lion Pirates to make animals evolve and develop special abilities, for example, giant size mutation. Is this a foreshadow of Vegapunk's new pacifist army? Vegapunk's old blueprint did show that weapons plus their fruits and plus animals can make an animal with powers. With zone their fruits also being stronger than normal humans, would it come as a shock if these animals had their brute strengths and their fruit powers? So far you have seen the influence of Vegapunk to his four Mads members and you're learning about the new pastafistas. And what else can we talk about now? Well, as my subscribers know, in Flying Panda style, I will go to the next level. With all the former members involved in some sort of pirate related activities, Queen with the Beast Pirates, Lingbird, Kinda Land Pirates, Caesar Clown who assists in illegal activities, Dr. Indigo with Shiki, and Judge who wanted his useless child to marry into the Charlotte family. But what about Vegapunk? What if I told you Dr. Vegapunk is also involved in his own type of piracy and is not on Earth but in space? Besides the above points of where we heard of Vegapunk, the next time we learn about Vegapunk is during the time skip when Frankie lands in the future country Borojimo in the land of Karakuri. Frankie later learns that this is where Vegapunk was born. He even finds his old home. While Frankie is there and talking with the residents of Karakuri, we learn an interesting detail about Vegapunk's in his youth. Apparently, he was so empathetic to the suffering of the people in the harsh cold that he wept constantly and even built a heating system for the island. Those blueprints that Frankie blown up by accident were considered to be priceless treasures by the people on the island. Now some of you may know this island was also the island which links with the NL cover page arc involving Dr. Tatsukimi, who was an old man who appeared in it. Tatsukimi was an extremely skilled roboticist, having built automated friends with human-like personalities and mannerism. He created the four wingless automators on Karakuri Island. One day, he saw a giant explosion on the moon which led to him being shocked and died while choking on his dumpling. 
his ultimate put him in his coffin and cried. After his burial, his ultimate swore revenge on whatever caused explosion on the moon that resulted in the death of their creator. Now, on the ultimate journey to, to fight against the space pirates. The space pirates are a group of animal-like aliens along with other strange creatures. They are moon miners that mine anything they can find. By looking at the space pirates closely, you can see that Jolly Roger with a skull of someone with a large forehead. Yes, you guess where I'm going with this. Vegapunk is the leader of the space pirates. The Vegapunk pirates. I always said this from the silhouette that Vegapunk had an unnormal large forehead. And no, I won't talk about any third eye powers in this theory. If you look at these fox-like creatures barring the leader, who looks like a mink, the rest seem to be identical to each other, almost like clones with cybernetic enhancements. But what is seen when we closely monitor it is that they have these pressure gauges and you find connections. When Kuma, who was modified by Vegapunk, you can see the same pressure gauges. But why would Vegapunk send or create a group of pirates to the moon? The answer is what lies below it. When you see the space pirates for the first time, it seems they were searching for something and it was clear when a nail blew up a hole is when we find out about the automators. The question is, was Vegapunk doing this for himself or is it all part of the world government schemes? Is this the real reason why Vegapunk hasn't been revealed? With Warner coming to a close soon, a new space arc and the introduction of Vegapunk will be a nice new setting. Heck, the signs were there when we look into the control room in Pank Hazard. Was he communicating with the moon? What other creatures was he creating which are up there? To end off, I want to end off with Lindbergh. Check out this particular pressure gauge design that appears in Lindbergh's jetpack and also in various space pirates chests. Of course we don't see one of Lindbergh's chests but that's because he was wearing clothes, similar to the one of the space pirates which you can conclude at least this device is not worn outside the clothes but is attached directly on the body. Most space pirates that we saw so far in their backstory are at least in mink-like features though some are weirdly similar to mink humanoids with animal features. Also space pirates seem to be quite technological advanced to with one of the cover stories showing a chimney-like machinery that seems to produce steam, possibly the technology be behind the jetpack. Lindbergh seems to be an inventor with quite technological advanced weapons that we never seen much elsewhere. However, the Ming tribe and also their hometown on Zo doesn't seem to incorporate any form of technological advanced knowledge and simply putting Lindbergh as only a Ming seems weird here. Also, based on his name reference, Charles Lindbergh was a famous aviator. In 1927, he became the first man to successfully fly an airplane across the Atlantic Ocean. However, despite serving in the US military in World War II, Charles Lindbergh was known as a Nazi sympathizer. He believed that preserving European blood was more important than democracy and was very against the idea of the US and UK joining World War II. He was often praised in Germany and even received a medal from Hitler. His actions and words led him being considered a traitor by President Roosevelt. So I believe that the failure of the revolutionary armies at the periphery was at least partially caused by betrayal by Lindbergh. Was it Lindbergh, one of the commanders of the revolutionary army, who has betrayed the revolutionaries at the Levelly? Is he also working with Dr. Vegapunk? Anyways, thanks for watching the video. Please leave your comments down below, please click like, and if you haven't, please subscribe to Flying Panda and of course, join our Discord. As you know, we got a Twitter account, me as there. We got Facebook, join us there. And also, we got a Discord channel with over 2,000 members. We're a great admin team, great members. We always talk about our One Piece theories in this channel. We always talk about One Piece in general. We talk about films. We talk about games. So if you haven't already, see you there on the Discord channel. One thing, I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind, I designed this rhyme. Stay in due time, or I know. Time is
is a valuable thing What you fly by as a pendulum swings What you count down to the end of the day The clock ticks life away It's so unreal Do you look out below What time fly through out the window Trying to hold on but didn't even know I wasted it all just to watch you go I kept everything inside even though I tried It all fell apart What it meant to be will eventually be a memory Of a time when I tried so hard Here we go now. Look, <laughs> 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 <laughs>